So what causes pain? So many of us have all of these problems and we just don't know what the hell they're from. What's this pain from? Is it because I do this? Is it because I do that? Is it going on all the time? It's pretty complex. So we need to figure out what's going on. There are really four things or four categories that we have to look at when we're thinking, what the hell is going on with my pain? What is causing it? The first is going to be functional. This is going to be a muscle weakness, um, or it could be um, an imbalance or adhesion. Adhesion, super common. It happens when we overuse muscles, which is very common, or severely underuse, where the oxygen or the muscle isn't getting enough oxygen. Uh, either will lead to a formation of this glue, sticky substance uh, that limits your function and can often compress joints, trap nerves, cause pain. So one, we got functional stuff. Then we got structural stuff. That's going to be something like degeneration or arthritis. You know, once you wear that out, it's going to react differently. It's going to be a little easier to become inflamed. Inflammation has chemicals in it that cause pain and discomfort, can cause achiness. Um, this can also refer to a surgery. Once we cut something out or put something in, that's going to permanently alter the way the joint works. While most, uh, you know, replacements or something, you might get a lot of your function back. Reality is, you replace a joint, it's very likely you're not going to be able to run and kick the same way you were if it was a knee. You're not going to be able to handle the same load in a shoulder. You're going to have limitations. Then you have something like chemical. This is going to be a hormonal imbalance, a food sensitivity, uh, some sort of chemical problem in the body. Chemical problems need chemical solutions. This is where prescription medicine comes in handy. Uh, you can't get a chemical solution uh, for a functional or structural problem because they don't match up, it doesn't work. But for a lot of things that are chemical, you can get uh, help with pharmaceuticals or better yet, you can figure out if there is a more holistic approach to that, like changing your diet, um, which is always preferred. Then of course we got psychological. Oftentimes we don't fully process our emotions uh, of things that happened to us in our past. And thoughts will elicit certain chemicals being uh, created and released into the body, which can then uh, basically lead to more pain. So while this might not be the sole issue, it's almost like uh, something like you're putting a megaphone, right? These things could be whispering, but we put it through that psychological filter and now it's much louder. That is a big problem. Now, you might say, well, these are the types, but how do I know which type it is? Well, let's ask, what is it doing? What are the characteristics the pain has uh, when you feel it? You know, uh, is it tied to an activity? Does it get worse when you're running or you're sitting, uh, squatting, those kind of things? Is it not tied to an activity? Is it around all the time? You know, that's going to be something that there's probably going to be a chemical component. You know, there's probably going to, maybe there's a psychological component. But if it's tied to an activity, it's almost certainly going to be a functional or structural element in there. And now, notice I'm not saying it's all this, it's all that. Pain is complex. And it's a matter of what you have and really figuring, uh, figuring that out and recognizing, like, I have this pain component, I have this pain component, I need to attack all of them if I want full resolution. Uh, how intense is it? If zero is nothing and 10 is super duper intense, like is it a two all day? Is Does it get up to a 10 if you do certain things? Uh, this is a question you need to ask yourself uh, and be honest with yourself. Don't be like, I'm walking around having conversations. Oh, this is a nine or 10. Guess what? That's bullshit. You're lying. You're lying to yourself. You're embellishing it to get a uh, pity party. That's not the case. 10 is like, I will let you cut off a limb if this makes it go away. That's intense. Walking around having conversations going, well, it was me. Total bullshit. Not the case. Be honest with yourself. How intense is it? When is that intensity happening? Is it tied to an activity? Is it not? What does it feel like? Is it sharp? Is it achy? Pins and needles? Throb? These are all things that elicit some pain or they might be something that's annoying. Like, what is it?
doing? When is it doing it? These are things we need to figure out. Then we have to look at some other things. Like, where is it? Does it travel? Does it say in one spot? Is it in all spots? Does it, is it in your arms sometimes and then it's in your legs? Uh, is it very repeatable where it's like, hey, I squat, pain's right here. I stop squatting, pain goes away. These patterns matter. And a lot of times patterns are related to certain things. If you have a problem with a particular disc, they're gonna have a certain pattern. If you have a problem with a particular joint in your body, they can refer things over to other areas. Uh, you have some sort of organ problem, they can refer to other areas as well. Knowing these referral patterns is important in figuring out what the cause of your pain is. And does it affect the way you think or feel? Like, are you getting depressed or anxious just thinking about, damn, I'm going to have this pain and I have, you know, I have this vacation coming up. Is that going to ruin it? Or like, oh, is this pain ever going to go away? Uh, it's just defeated me. I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do. And you're just like, the wind is out of your sails. Like, you have to take all of these into account. Or better yet, a doctor who knows what the hell they're doing has to take all of these into account to figure out what's going on and what kind of approach is needed. If you're lucky, it's only going to be one of those four pillars that's causing pain. Uh, and if you're really lucky, you can find a healthcare provider that can recognize their own limitations and know when to work with others. I'm really good at fixing functional things and allowing others to help me with other things, you know, structural things. We can work around that. The chemical, psychosocial, those are things that I'm going to help with what I can help with, the functional stuff, the structural stuff. But the other stuff, I'm going to co-care with somebody that's better at that stuff than I am to ensure that you're going to get the results you need. So if you've asked yourself these questions and you can really get some good answers, it's time to reach out to us. We pride ourselves in saying no to patients, potential patients. We say no because we're not appropriate for everybody. Multiple times in the last couple of weeks, I have said, I think you should come in for the exam so we can know exactly what is going on. But I will tell you, I am not likely going to be the provider that's going to get you where you need to be. I want to know how much I can help. And if it's a reasonable amount or a really solid amount, I'll say, hey, you should stay as a patient. But if not, I'm going to refer you to the most appropriate provider so you get the results that you need. This is how healthcare should work. Unfortunately, most people don't do that and they see you as dollar signs or we see you as a person, a person who has a problem that needs a solution. And if we can do our part in helping you find that solution, well, let's have a little party, you know? Let's find that solution together. Let us help you get out of pain and get you back to the life that you've been missing out on. All right, said my piece. Thanks for watching.